Our next speaker is Hadas Inbar, who will work with Professor Marcus J. Bueller at MIT. She will speak on mechanical properties and adhesion of the collagen hydroxyapatite interface in bone. Thank you very much. Um, this summer, I had the privilege of working under the guidance of uh, Professor Bueller and studied the interactions between the protein and the mineral phase in bone. So, bone is, a lo is the load-bearing framework of the human body, and it serves a variety of functional uh, proper, uh, functions such as uh, synthetic, metabolic, and mechanical ones. And it, it is mainly built out of two main constituent constituents, which are the hydroxyapatite mineral and the collagen protein. And these two main building blocks um, form a complex hierarchical system, and where each level has its own functional property. As seen here, um, the lowest level that was examined in this uh, research was of the amino acids, which then assemble into three polypeptides that form the tropocollagen uh, protein, which is uh, basically a triple helix. And then when these uh, collagen proteins assemble in staggered arrays, they, they form the collagen fibrils. And in the gaps between the collagen fibrils, there is a mineral phase of hydroxyapatite. The last structure that is found in all types of bone is um, bone fiber, which is basically, again, those mineralized fibrils staggered in arrays, and uh, in between them, there is a extra fibril matrix of protein. So in this study, I wanted to examine the interactions between the collagen and the hydroxyapatite, and basically understand what happens when um, collagen is sheared across the surface of a nanocrystal of hydroxyapatite, and decide whether it depends on the size itself of the crystal. So to do, uh, to do this uh, experiment, I used student molecular dynamic simulation, which is uh, a great computational uh, method that enables us to predict the behavior of a system when it is under load, meaning that we combine both experimental data that is already known to us, as well as theoretical calculations. The initial system itself, as shown here, is the collagen molecule uh, placed above the fixed hydroxyapatite. The collagen was then pulled in uh, the right direction here, and as it was sheared across the hydroxyapatite, we wanted to examine these uh, changes in its mechanical behavior. And the hydroxyapatite itself um, had three models. We had three models of it, um, seven angstrom thickness, 20 angstrom thickness, and uh, 14, and then 20 angstrom thickness. And with each, each thickness, we uh, tried to decide what actually happened in the system itself, and why did it, the, the behavior vary. So the results are shown here in these uh, graphs, and immediately you can detect the outsider here, which is the pure collagen molecule without any hydroxyapatite. Um, but before I examine this, I would first like to define a few terms. Um, some of you would, would be more intuitive uh, than others. The first one is strength, and strength is defined as the ability for material to withstand stress um, without failure or before failure. In this case, th this would be the rupture of the collagen molecule and um, detachment of one strand out of the uh, system. The next term is, term is strain. And strain is defined as the ratio between the displacement of a material, um, the elongation of it, over the original length. Meaning that if I have, say, 100 displacements, then the, uh, I'll have a rubber band twice as long as uh, the original one that I took. Um, the last term is Young's modulus. And this enables us to um, tell if a material is stiff or elastic, meaning um, for a stiff material, the Young modulus would be high because it is defined as the ratio of stress over strain, the amount of stress we have to apply in order to create some certain um, strain. And for a ductile material, we have a low Young's modulus. So returning back to our graphs here, um, we, can sh we can show that uh, the collagen in the hydroxyapatite system was uh, stiffer than the, coll the pure collagen. Uh, and another important uh, feature is that it was also stronger, where the peaks here of uh, disassembling were, um, were above those of the uh, collagen. So this was explained through three main failure modes of the collagen molecule in the hydroxyapatite system. The first one was the low-rate plastic deformation. And during this phase, as shown here, um, the backbone of the collagen is stretched. And while it is stretched, inevitably, inevitably, <laughs> some of the hydrogen bonds break, basically. And 
These hydrogen bonds that break cause the uh, small drops in the uh, stress curve. And this is why it's not really a linear, um, a linear uh, uh, behavior, but it is still uh, an elastic stretching. The next failure mode is necking. And necking is defined as excessive plastic deformation. And during this phase, here is showing the plateau, the backbone of the collagen um, stretches and deforms very drastically, meaning that a large amount of hydrogen bonds break. And these, this breaking of the hydrogen. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this better? Um, um, can everybody hear me? No. Yeah, okay. Got me? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for telling. Okay, so the last stage is the creeping. And creeping uh, sounds pretty cool, and it is, again, the linear curve here, and is defined as the slow movement of the collagen or any other material when it is under a strain uh, other stress levels that are below the breaking point, those that would cause the breaking point, but enough to cause it these, this slow movement, as can be seen, seen here in the movement of the collagen across the surface of the hydroxyapatite. So how does these three fa main failure modes create a stronger and a stiffer collagen? That kind of sounds uh, peculiar. So this is explained by the hydrogen bonds that form between the backbone of the collagen and the surface of the hydroxyapatite. And this is the aspect which I chose to study. As shown here in the uh, upper row of the stress over strain uh, distribution, and here in the lower row of the hydrogen bond number forming between the deformed uh, backbone of the collagen and the surface of the hydroxyapatite. So for the, th the first model of uh, seven angstrom thickness, uh, we've shown a linear um, increase in the strain, meaning a slow uh, elastic deforma a plastic deformation. And as this happens, the number of hydrogen bonds also quite gradually increases, uh, resulting with a higher strength overall of the system. This has the highest strength as well as stiffness. For the next model, we've shown that during the creeping, uh, during the necking, I'm sorry, uh, range here, there is a high amount of hydrogen bonds that form, which makes sense when you come to think of it, a, number, a high number of hydrogen bonds uh, break in the collagen, uh, meaning that it will have a higher accessibility to form hydrogen, hydrogen bonds with the surface of the hydroxyapatite itself. Um, for the last model here, model uh, the 21 angstrom thickness, um, we've shown also a quite gradual increase in the hydrogen bonds. and. This, uh, this area here is sort of combination between creeping and necking, meaning it's, uh, it varies. And this is what causes the quite gradual also increase. Because during the creeping, the same amount of hydrogen bonds remains uh, in, within the collagen and within the hydroxyapatite and collagen interface. So to conclude, we've shown that through these three main failure modes of the collagen, we've been able to create a stronger and stiffer system and um, that is due to the hydrogen bonds that create a higher resistance for the collagen to be sheared across the surface. The higher strength was found to be for the thinner models of the hydroxyapatite. And that is also due to the um, more equal stress distribution in the system overall, meaning that for, say, the uh, thinner a model of the hydroxyapatite, there would be a lower Young's modulus. And this, uh, um, this smaller distance between the stiffness of the hydroxyapatite and the elasticity of the collagen means that stress would be evenly distributed and then the necking process would be less likely to happen. Um, due to that fact, um, necking process would happen later on in the uh, uh, th thinner models and therefore um, the rupture of the collagen would be delayed in, uh, when you compare it to the strain um, fit strain levels that it would happen. Um, the significance of this research, you may ask, is that we've proven here for the first time the enhanced stiffness of the collagen in the molecular level. Previous research um, mainly uh, studied the enhanced stiffness of collagen fibrils, 
and um, the overall enhancement of bone when there's uh, the mineral phase, but not the actual increase in stiffness of the collagen molecule itself. Um, and for further study, we might uh, apply also it to different surfaces of uh, the hydroxyapatite, because in this one we studied only the uh, calcium surface one. Another option to continue this research would be studying the, um, uh, the system itself in water, since this was a dry system. I would like to acknowledge um, several people. First of all, my um, mentor, Professor Marcus J. Bueller. Um, again, I would like to acknowledge uh, Zhao Quinn, the graduate student who I've worked with, and the people in his lab. Um, also, I would like to acknowledge my tutor, Annie Young, and all the RSI staff, including Jenny, Dr. Rickard, and any other, and all the TAs who helped me create this uh, slide and um, paper. I would like to acknowledge Mariona Bedanas, who helped me and taught me MATLAB and create some of these graphs. <laughs> and uh, Mrs. Salon from uh, Weizmann uh, Institute of Technology, and all my other sponsors that helped me uh, reach this place, and of course CE and MIT that enabled this amazing summer experience. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, Dr. Shelley? Can you explain to me how the simulation actually will yeah, what sure. Level, uh, what um, level is the calculation made? Is it a thick level? How the forces uh, calculate? Yeah. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, so, uh, Professor Kishani asked how exactly uh, steering molecular dynamics works. If you would like to get more details. Okay, so um, let's continue a bit. Okay. So, um, steering molecular dynamics works basically, as I said previously, um, on both known experimental data as well as theoretical, and I'll focus more on the theoretical right now. So it uses a, a lot of um, statistical calculations, uh, say a Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo um, statistics also. It has um, the calculation of the energy of the system in total, it is of the energies of the, the covalent energies, the bindings between the atoms themselves, meaning the rotation, the bending, the um, weight rotation bending, and the angle of the bond. Another thing it, uh, in this specific system that it has is the energy of the van der Waals bonds that form, as well as the electrostatic bonds. The electrostatic uh, include the hydrogen bonds and the columbic forces. So this is concerning the energy. Um, concerning the actual construction of the model, well, um, for that I um, uh, obtained the collagen molecule through uh, previous models that um, one of them was uh, already performed in the lab of the collagen molecule itself. Um, the hydroxyapatite, um, my uh, graduate student helped and, uh, to create it um, using, we basically cut the hexagonal crystal of the hydroxyapatite into a monoclinic structure. It, it looks like a monoclinic structure. This is why I gave uh, width, length, and uh, thickness. Another thing, after creating the system itself, you had to stabilize it in order to create um, the system in equilibrium, meaning that um, so atoms won't just fly off during the simulation, which is one um, difficulty that we had during um, uh, other simulations that we had. Um, after stabilizing it and determining the uh, crystal geometry of the hydroxyapatite, meaning that it's uh, basically stable and that it is how it's found in reality, um, we had to parameterize the force field um, the force field that we used was CHARM-22, which is usually used for, the, uh, for proteins and uh, organic materials. So that's why we had to parameterize it specifically for the mineral of the hydroxyapatite itself, um, since it didn't apply and we had to uh, continue um, more, more specific steps for that um, specifically. Um, again, after, the, uh, after we parameterize it for the hydroxyapatite, we again have to minimize the energy. And then finally, we can shear the hydroxyapatite across the surface. With each time step, after we shear it, we uh, put the system in equilibrium, shear it, equilibrium. That's how this time steps works. And then by the end, we have a full simulation of the system. Um, nice work, by the way. I just have a question. What do, were there any points where maybe you made a mistake or there was a setback? something went wrong, and then you overcame it, and you learned? Are there any experiences you have? Yeah, um, so the question was, what were my setbacks or difficulties during the simulation? So 
Um, to be honest, the thing that most frustrated me throughout this research <laughs> was that I was always, only able to obtain three models. And that was due to the complexity of the system, since we had both a protein and the adraxia appetite itself with the thickness. And um, I created also more other models of the adroxy appetite that were thicker. But because the system was bigger, the uh, interactions with, between the atoms themselves, I had to change them for, some, for the, other, the bigger models, since um, I had to change the uh, Leonard-Jones potential and the, uh, the um, radius of the uh, cutoff distance of the uh, system. So um, that was a main problem that created a lot of setbacks considering time that I had to actual, actually study the system. Um, another setback would be maybe I would have liked to study the system in water later on, which also is quite heavy. Um, what would you predict to see different when you add water to the simulation? Because with all those hydrogen bombs, that could throw everything off. Exactly. So um, he asked, "What is the?" I was asked, "What is the? Uh, what would be the behavior of the system if I added water? What might change?" So that is a good question because water is 10 percent. It has a 10 percent um, with 10 percent of the bone, and we should definitely consider it as one of the materials that could interact with the collagen and hydroxy appetite. And would you, if I'll just return to the simulation, it would be easier to explain. So if we take, say, this um, last model here. So one thing that I would um, think about when, uh, when considering the interactions between the collagen and the, and the uh, water would be first that maybe it might be even uh, stabilized um, through the, the, the hydrogen bonds forming between the water. So I wouldn't know how it would affect the hydroxy appetite itself, the interactions between the interface. That would be really an interesting thing. Maybe it would um, create a better, a more stable system since it would surround it. Or on the other hand, it might um, unstable the system because the collagen would rather form hydrogen bonds with the, hydrox with the water. So um, I'm not sure how to predict this system, but uh, I think that overall we would see maybe enhanced strength for the collagen molecule. Maybe not considering the stiffness of it, but the, maybe the strength because it would be less likely to finally break. And, um, and rupture. Um, other aspects, I, I think we could only see after the simulation is complete. Yeah, I plan to continue this. Yeah, this is quite interesting. One more question there. So in what context is it interesting to understand the mechanical properties of different thicknesses of hydroxy appetite over this matrix? OK, so I was asked, what, um, why would we test, uh, in, for the first place, the uh, thicknesses of the hydroxy appetite, why, why would it matter? So the thicknesses that I studied, uh, initially studied, were of uh, 7 angstrom till 21. In bone, it is found between the range of 2 to 4 nanometers, meaning 20 to 40 angstrom. And the, the continuing models actually will be up till 42 angstrom uh, once they're complete. But um, the original thought was that during the fracture of bone, so when bone fractures, it is under, under tensile stress. So maybe I'll, it is under tensile stress, meaning, oh, shoot. <laughs> it is under tensile stress, meaning that the, um, OK, here, it is under tensile stress, meaning the, the stress is uh, go, going in this direction. And this stress would uh, come, uh, would be found in the system as shear stress, actually, would come across as shear stress. And the reason we're studying for different thicknesses is because uh, there are different stages in bone when, like, sometimes when bone has um, a less uh, 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 hydro hydroxyapatite that is thinner and hydroxyapatite that is thicker. So we want to study maybe for the thinner model, it's not only because of the density, the amount of hydroxyapatite itself, maybe it's the thickness of it that matters because previous models only tested the thickness, the density of the mineral. Another aspect um, for studying the thickness is for de novo materials, because studying bone is really important, but we could also apply this to other aspects of um, mechanical engineering and copying this biological system to um, uh, other materials that we might engineer ourselves in order to create high, higher strength and stiffness. Thanks.